as far as he has gone. And it is good to share this because one of the things that <clears throat> he stresses that when a healer works, when a healer is effective in their treatment of a person, they go into very high beta activity of the brain. <clears throat> and then the beta stops. Now, when I work with a crystal, and when I work especially <clears throat> with the six-sided crystal, I find that I'm speaking for myself now with the measurements we have done at the University of California in Davis, that I will be an exceedingly high beta with my eyes wide open. Draw my breath in, <clears throat> close my eyes, I'll put a crystal in my hand, the beta activity will go down, uh, beta it will down, but the alpha activity will go up. And then when I open my eyes with a crystal in my hand, it will go right up as if I had my eyes closed. I'll show you the chart tomorrow on this. So you can hold very high alpha. Now what I <clears throat> practically interpret that as is that you're opening a window, a window to your creative mind, the mind that <coughs> is not limited by time and space or by the senses. It's a dream state. It's what you do when you get your active state of dreaming, you're in high alpha. And people go into long training in silver mind control and the different type of exercises to increase the alpha activity of a person. Here with one breath, you're in maximum alpha as you hold the crystal. You put the crystal down, the alpha activity drops right down to normal. It's one of the physical things that I have seen in my own body of what happens when I use a crystal. Now, why a crystal of this shape against the normal six <coughs> shape that the crystal has? That happened in 1974 or 5. I awoke one morning, and <clears throat> as I awoke, with my eyes open, I saw an image of the tree of life. <coughs> A crystal. <coughs> the representation of two different angles. I did not have any 
scientific equipment at IBM with all of the laboratory tools I had available to me. I could not measure the field that was contained in here. I knew I had a field. Two months later, a young man came to my door by the name of Daniel Perkins. He said, here is your instrument, the Omega One. He, Daniel Perkins, is in Las Vegas, Nevada. He was guided by extraterrestrials, by a extraterrestrial by the name of Sanjasi, who is the same person who has worked with Billy Myers in, in uh, Switzerland. She gave him, according to Daniel Perkins, the design for this equipment. He put it together and she directed him to come and give me the equipment. It's about as far out as you can imagine. I got the, he gave me no instructions. He said, you'll know how to use it. No information. He said, here it is. And Lily walked away and that was the last. A month later, I got a bill from his wife. But I then learned how to work with it. And I got various types of numbers. I said, now what do these numbers, I had to give assignment to these numbers to give a understanding of what these numbers meant. I had no textbook. I had, and then I went to England and went to visit with the Delawares. I saw their laboratory in Oxford. <coughs> but what upset me and saddened me is that their obsession with disease you know, giving a rate to every disorder in the body. I said, that's not right. I want to quantify the whole person. I don't want to look at minuity, bits and pieces. I want to see you as a whole person. And so, I made the first set of crystals like this according to the signature of the doctors that were with me. We had a group of around 12 doctors, medical doctors, MDs, who were the first people to get these crystals. <clears throat> I taught them how to use it to the best of my knowledge, but I got their signature and then made the crystal to fit the vibration <coughs> of their signature. The number I got for the crystal cut to this shape, double terminated, a variable angle between here and here is the number for 54. Now I measured water and the number I get for water is 1. For 54. I measure a natural crystal like this. It is not 454. It is a variable number. I measure Herkimer diamond now, which is a double terminated natural crystal. And the rate I get for Herkimer diamond is 0.02, no, Miss Parman, is 0.21. Now the wonderful thing that we found in Germany, there were about 30 people pulled with crystals, four, six, eight-sided. A number of people had in the group natural crystals and some had Herkimer diamonds. And we were charging them from having a mass every day said with a Catholic priest in our group. <coughs> All of the people 
all of the crystals had the same 454. Those that had Herkimer diamonds had this, and the others had 120 like that. The Herkimer diamonds, almost no charge throughout the day, or throughout the four days. The crystals cut to this shape, charged up to, they got to a point where we had a charge going to 10 to the 30 some odd power, 10 with 30 some odd zeros and back. So we build up an enormous charge, it's almost infinite the capacity to hold charge in a crystal like this. Because we're dealing with a force which has no dimension in the physical world. We're dealing with an etheric energy, an etheric formative force. This is critical, and I'm going to be stressing that over these days that we are together. It will act on physical matter like a physical force, but it is not a physical force. When I do healing, I'm dealing with as what is Dr. Miller calls para-electricity, something beyond electricity. Now, I have now a geometric form which is one of the sacred geometric forms recognized in the Kabbalah and understood in the Kabbalah. And it is called the Tree of Life. <clears throat> it is tied, the, all of that sacred teaching, into water. Because from water comes life. And so this goes hand in hand. This geometric form and a crystal and water have the same fundamental note or vibration. Once you get that fundamental note, you add, when you can add an additional vibration here to this, you can do a resonance transfer. Now, this number, 454, <coughs> is representative of the geometric form that I have here. I get exactly the same number, whether it is four-sided, like this, six-sided, eight-sided, 12 or 13-sided. The note for this is identical do this. 454. It's just the rate at which I can store information or vibration in here compared to here is much, much faster, much higher. Now, <clears throat> so this sets a form <coughs> geometry on which we can start storing information. Now, uh, what types of information do we want to store? We exist both in our body and outside our body. Now, let us look for a moment at our body as a shell. Let us think of our body as a shell, which we want to write programs to get this inner shell operating in a certain way. The operand information codes for our body come from the nucleus of our cells. The nucleus is an oscillator, the DNA strands. The nucleus emits light. The nucleus of our cells are light-emitting organs. 
Here is a paper I just received from Dr. Pop in Germany called Laser-Like Effects in Biomolecules that the radiation coming from the nucleus of a cell is coherent or laser-like. That that energy has a coherency to it and an informational code. This is a paper that was just given to me. Now, that is the total information of everything going on in our body. Every cell emits the entire patterns of life of our body. What differentiates those patterns? The membrane around the cell is liquid crystal. The membrane around the cell is very, very sensitive to minute variations in electrical charge. The membrane now is put a very weak negative charge or very weak positive charge on it will become conductive. So it will allow these fields to come through and you then get an outside code going into the plasma or fluid part of the body. What controls those charges? Thought. Your mind generating a field in space, drawing it in with breath, goes into the lungs, transported in the bloodstream to every cell in your body. That code controls <coughs> the conductivity of the membrane around every cell, allowing the informational code to come out. Do you follow? It's very complex, but that informational code from the nucleus now then is moderated or modulated by the patterns of thought that you and I generate. So if we, if you, think well of yourself, you have a good feeling about you. You draw that feeling into your body, you're generating a totally balanced bioplasma, which then allows a full output from the nucleus bio photons to come through and what that does then it spreads to the adjoining cells and they start to interconnect energetically to each other forming then the systematic organ that they were designed to be and function as they conjoin together and become one functioning body or organ but the regulator is your thought. That is what we work in and around and through with a crystal. Is that we can create with our mind negative patterns of thought. These negative patterns of thought lock into the tissues, we become infected by our thoughts. We become fixated by a pattern of thought. And so now as we breathe in and out, even when we want to think well of ourselves, <clears throat> we draw the energy in, but it is broken up, dissipated, and malfunctioning of that cellular system takes place. So, we try to compensate for that type of malfunction <coughs> by <coughs> chemical means. We'll try to do it by exercise. We'll try to do it by physical massage. We try to do it by acupuncture. But the greatest entry and exit point is the thought itself.
because we started from thought. <clears throat> the definition of disease that is given by Dwaj Kul, a Tibetan master, in the book he dictated in Alice Bailey, Esoteric Healing, said that all disease is the result of, <coughs> of inhibited soul life. What inhibits soul life is your or my thoughts. <coughs> and eat water. <coughs> we, when we think, produce a plasma here in front of us. <coughs> I'll show you that in the next few days. <coughs> we draw that plasma into our <coughs> When we are incoherent in our thought, we create then the bioplasmic disturbances that go on within us. This ties in with what you were asking me about on the previous meetings we had, you know, the bioplasmas. Thought has contained in it the quality of, watch, geometric patterning. So a thought has a geometric form to it. And the study of the patterns of thought is one of the things that I, I am undertaking. It's geometric pattern, or it's sacred geometry. Because God communicates to man by thought. God has expressed himself to us in geometric form and pattern. And man has responded to these in various forms that he has erected in his recognition of the divine mind. One of the outward expressions are the churches that we built. Prior to those churches were the standing stones. Prior to these were the sacred symbols that they wrote onto stones, the rock carvings. These have tremendous power on them. Thank you, Kurt. I'm giving you now the primary core of thinking, which is behind all crystal therapy. I awoke one morning again, and I heard a voice speak in me, and it said the following. <clears throat> Records are written in bone. Records are written in bone. This meant that we have a informational storage system in the bony structure of our body. Why? Let us look at bone. Bone is crystalline. It's the only crystalline body we have. But above all, bone and a crystal like this are very, very synonymous and close to one another. When I take this crystal in my hand and I squeeze it this way, the pressure I put onto this crystal with my fingers is converted into an electrical field that is called piezoelectricity. Pressure into electrical field. So I can modulate the information in here by just minute pressures like I'm playing onto a piano. The bones in our body are also piezoelectric. <clears throat> Every bone in the spinal column is a pyramid. It's triangular in shape this way. It is shaped in this form. 
in my spinal column. And there's an insulator <coughs> insulated between each bone. What have you got? Source of EMF. Correct? We generate fields, electrical fields with our spine as we move our spine this way. We're generating a current and it's flowing up and down our spine. The Russians have measured this. It is measured and put into a book, Electromagnetic Fields and Life, by Dr. Pressman, published by Plenum Publishing Company. We also, when well, water spins or flows, generate a magnetic field. Moving bodies of water generate a magnetic field, an attractive and repulsive force. These fields, in turn, interact with the electrical fields we create and forming a networking of charge around us. So, too, we do with the crystal. When I draw my breath in, pulling any charge that is from the crystal <clears throat> into my body, I'm pulling the thing in, building up a tension in my body, let it out through my nostrils. I oscillate the field very rapidly. I'm charging. I charge the crystal. When I do that, I can sense the charge, putting my finger onto the crystal and it will stick. It becomes sticky. And the moment I put the finger on, I can't move it. But watch. I look at the finger and the crystal, I draw my breath in, it becomes smooth. As long as I hold my breath, it's like glass, but I let my breath out, it becomes sticky. Can't move it again. Now, let's all do that. Get your crystal out.